Welcome to Practically Christian. I'm Luke, and I'm here with my wife, Janelle. Hi, guys. And our friend, Jake. Hey! We share conversations that help you know Jesus more deeply and follow him more faithfully. The truth is, no one has arrived at Christ-likeness. To grow in that direction, we believe you need authentic relationships and biblical theology applied to your everyday life. We hope that you're encouraged to grow and to live out the biblical truths that we discuss on this episode. So let's get practical and dive into a conversation about God's glory and what it means. We've been talking over the last two times about metaphorical language. Um, the first time we talked about death and kind of the, the metaphor of that. Um, and then we talked about heaven. Um, and in some sense, like how heaven is a me- metaphor for like the place of authority. Um, and today we're going to talk about glory. And you might be going, glory? Glory is not metaphorical. Like we give glory to God. Like it's a thing. Um And I think that's actually one of the big problems when it comes to the conversation of glory is because glory is a metaphor and none of us could say what it is. Like, you know what I mean? Like if you, as you're listening right now, think, maybe you're smarter than I was before I started researching this or have more knowledge than I did. Um, But if you like try to express what the word glory is, and I think a lot of times you'll, you'll, people might come up with, it means you like to, to praise God. It's like, no, there's a word for that. That's called praise. Um, or I think of like God's greatness. And yeah. I think of what glory is. Yeah, exactly. Like, glory of like God's greatness. His greatness. Yeah, which 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 is pretty close to what's going on, right? So the word glory um, in Hebrew, it's the word kavod. Um, you might see it if you decide to look it up for some reason. You might see it with a B. That's okay. The Hebrew letter B and V kind of mix up a lot. Um, but it's kavod, and it's translated glory. And it's also, to my chagrin, translated honor. Why it's annoying is because um, when it's talking about God, it's translated glory almost every time. When it's talking about people, it's almost always translated honor. And this creates like this misunderstanding of what's going on in the word. Um, But here's the fun thing is it doesn't mean either of those things. It means value. But here's the other thing. It doesn't mean that either. It means something's heavy. (laughs) The word actually means heaviness. And um, in the the reason heaviness means value is because if you think about ancient Hebrew, ancient Hebrew people, how did they measure what something was worth? They weighed it. And so you would have a scale. You would weigh how much you were buying. You would weigh it against your scaling weights. Um, And so the idea is that if something's heavier, it's more valuable. So the idea is that God is infinitely heavy, so he's infinitely valuable. Hmm. Right? This is this is what's under underneath the word kavod, is the idea of value um, and heaviness kind of together. Well, this what uh, you're reminding me, Jake, of my Old Testament class back in seminary days, and my professor was kind of just storytelling the story of Eli and his sons. Mm-hmm. And if you guys remember the story, like Eli was very fat. And he fell over. And there's actually a play on words in that passage because it talks about the ark where God's glory is, uh, like the heaviness yeah. of God's presence, and it also talks about Eli being fat. But it's the same word yeah. in Hebrew. They, he, he fell over and he died because he was too heavy. Yeah, he broke his neck, right? Yeah, he yeah. broke his neck. Over. Because he was too kavod. Yeah, because he was too kavod. So yeah. it's the same word in the same passage. But yeah, just say it, it can mean literally, literally heavy. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so and, and, and the metaphorical understanding of words comes from their literal meaning applied normally in that context, right? right? And so um, for you, just like right now, if we think about the, the metaphorical idea is kind of like that God is infinitely valuable, right? That's what it means to be kavod, for, to God be, to be infinitely kavod is to be mm-hmm. of all value. And in some sense, it also means that he's kind of like all heavy, in like, if you, you can think about that also, like in a metaphorical sense of like God's presence is weighty, it carries weight. Actually, while researching this, I was reminded of the idea of like C.S. Lewis has a sermon called "The Weight of Glory," right? That's kind of was like there's a weightiness to it. So, which one of those, value or heavy, 
connects with you more. Like for, for me, weightiness does. Yeah, like the God's presence has like I don't know if I'm using this word the right way or not, but gravitas. Mm-hmm. It's like what it comes to mind because like, like the idea of gravity or like intensity. Uh, if I think about God's presence, yeah, it's um, more real and more yeah more intense than other things are. So I think mm-hmm. of like the weightiness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I would say viscerally, I feel like weightiness has more of like a physical, like, I don't know, feeling to it. Whereas I think value is an easier concept. Mm-hmm. It's more like a, in the idea realm, it's easier to mm-hmm. grasp the idea of value mm-hmm. and what it means, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Like it's, 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 e- it's easier to understand what it means that God is infinitely valuable. But, like, in some sense, you can, like, viscerally feel the idea that God is weighty in everything that he does and everything that he is. Um, And the reason we're bringing up this conversation about glory um, isn't just because we find this word really interesting. It's probably because you may have heard at some point someone say, God does everything for his own glory. And that sounds really nice, but... Um, there's no actual verse in the Bible that says that. And so we kind of want to talk about what glory is and we're going to kind of like look and see, can that be true based on what glory is? Um, and so if it's true that God is infinitely heavy, infinitely weighty, infinitely valuable, can he be doing everything for that? Okay. And we'll come back to that question as we go. Um, Luke, can you read... Exodus 33, 12 through 23. Yes, I can. Here it is. Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now, therefore, if I have found favor in your sight, please show me now your ways that I may know you in order to find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. And he said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go with me, don't bring us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people? Is it not in your going with us, so that we are distinct, I and your people, from every other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, This very thing that you have spoken, I will do. For you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Please show me your glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and will will proclaim before you my name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But he said, You cannot see my face, for man shall not see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock, and while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. And then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Okay, yeah. So there's a few different things going on here, uh, kind of to do with glory. The thing that really stood out to me when I was reading it was, Moses says, Let me see your glory. Let me see your value. And God says, I'm going to let me make my goodness pass in front of you. And then kind of, and then switches back to it's his glory passing in front. Mm-hmm. But that seems very connected right there. And then there's also that part about like, how will people know that it's you who go with us? And kind of like that, in some sense, fame or like his name being known. So in this passage, whether it be the connection with goodness or something else, how does, how does this work with our understanding that the Lord is heavy and he's valuable. How, how does that understanding kind of like change if we start thinking about glory in that way? Mm-hmm. I've always thought like when he says, you can't see my face, it's like you mm-hmm. can't handle my face. It's kind of like mm-hmm. the way that I uh, mentally mm-hmm. interpret that. But I feel like um, weight is that way. Like there's only so much you can handle. And then you can't carry anymore, or you can't hold anymore, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so it's almost like God's, like, protecting Moses from too much of the weight mm-hmm. 
um, in a sense. Mm -hmm. He's not just saying no. He says, yes, I'll give you as much as you can handle. Yeah. But you can't handle, you know. Yeah. But he he officially says, mankind can't see my face, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, But I just think of, like, the hand. Like, he puts his hand to cover the cleft in the rock and then Mm -hmm. passes and then lets him see the back. It's like he protects him. Mm -hmm. From his own glory. From his own own, glory. Yeah. No, this, it actually kind of reminds me of, I'm reading a The Expanse book series right now. And in the third book, there's this part where he, like, connects with this alien-like technology. And it, like, lets him see, like, the in some ways, like, the history of the universe. And then he, like, takes his hand off and it says, and when I tried to think about it, I got a headache. So I stopped. And like, kind of like that idea, it's like, it's so big that, like, it just, like, hurts to think, to, like, try to experience all of it yeah. kind of idea. Yeah. I have nothing to add. I think that's a good answer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I think the, the interesting thing to me is, like, we can often get stuck in this idea of actually thinking that glory is an attribute of God. But it's not. His glory, he's valuable because of who he is. He's not, like, value. It's in, in that same sense, right? He's, God's, God's glory is connected to his goodness in this passage, it's he's he's valuable he's glorious because he's so good mm. and in the same sense that if he was all evil he would no longer be glorious he wouldn't be valuable um so i just, i found that like a really interesting connection for me um and i think the other thing going on is one of the questions that we often forget to ask when it comes to glory is um is glory the goal is it the end or is it the means that God uses a lot? Hmm. I just think of it as yeah. like, it's just a true thing. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Uh, like I'm hmm. thinking of like the earth has gravity. Yeah. Because it has mass. Yeah. Like it's a, a logical connection of like the earth is this big. Yep. Gravity's part of it. And gravity's part of it. Like almost like this is who God is. Yep. And because that's who he is, he has glory. Yeah. He has this weightiness yeah. no, value. And that's it's kind of what I, it's a kind of think about when it's the means or end. Mm-hmm. It's like sometimes we think about like God created the whole universe for his glory or did everything for his glory. It's like, that would be like the end, like the end goal Got it. versus like the means is God uses his glory to bring people to him. Mm-hmm. It's like, so that's Moses is like, people need to know about you. They need to know your glory so that X, Y, and Z. Yeah. It's like the means, not the end, often. Um, so here's the question is, can God become more glorious? Yes or no? If Especially if we think about it as weighty or valuable, can God become more glorious? I don't, <clears throat> I don't think he can intrinsically change <laughs> to be more glorious, but I think we can appreciate his glory more Mm -hmm. so it's almost like in our sight he can become more glorious Mm -hmm. but not it's not that his actual value or his weightiness has changed Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, just to reiterate let's say it differently like we can appreciate his value or his weightiness um like see him more truly Mm -hmm. or even experience it like in a different way than we have before or in a deeper way Yeah. yeah yeah so I think um this is this kind of goes, and we're going to read um, 1 Corinthians 10, uh, 31 through 33 in a second. Um, but this really connects to this idea of, like, um, what does it mean to do things for God's glory? Because if God can't become more glorious, well, I think a lot of people have, and I think I have in the past, had, like, this idea of, like, oh, yeah, we're giving glory to God. And this, there was this old movie. I tried to find the name of it, but I couldn't find it. It was about like the Greek gods and in it, it was like the Greek gods were really worried because people weren't praising them enough. And so they were like dying. Oh, there was a book that we read. Yeah, there is. That, that sounds very familiar. And, and so like, Gaiman, or no. yeah, American gods, American gods. Yeah. Some like that. So, so when I was a kid, I had like this idea of like glory was like, God like wanted it. He needed it. Kind of like the Greek gods wanted it and needed it. Cause that was like his power, his battery basically. It was like, he wanted sacrifice. Cause that was like how he was going to like the, the smell and glory that came off those sacrifices was like his fuel cell being filled. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a very common, like, even if people don't say it, that's a very common way that people can think about glory. 
Well, I was thinking how, because I, I don't think in our circles people say... For the glory of God or something. Uh, yeah, in general we don't use that word a ton, mm-hmm. but I think they do occasionally when they're talking about, like, I don't want to take credit, and, like, I want to give mm-hmm. God the glory. Mm-hmm. For, and, like, you see that with, like, sports stars mm-hmm. would probably be a common example that people would be aware of, like... Glory to God. Glory to God. Mm-hmm. Like, let him... But the way I think of the way that they're using the word is, like, let him receive the honor mm-hmm. for being the provider mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. the victory or, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, whatever abilities I have. So, yeah, I would say it's... From him. They're using it more as, like, honor mm-hmm. to God. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's like, it, in some sense, like, I, I would use the word recognition to God. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, no, definitely. All right, so this is First Corinthians 10. 31 through 33. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Do not cause anyone to stumble, whether Jews, Greeks, or the church of God, even as I try to please everyone in every way, for I am not seeking my own good, but the good of many, so that they may be saved. Hmm. And I think one one of the things that's going on in this passage that's a really interesting connection is that, and this goes into the idea of like, what is glory for? Is that he says, do everything for the glory of God. And then that continues into so that people could be saved. And I think it kind of fits in this idea of um, God's name being known. The reason that we spread his name is because when people see God's glory, the natural response is to humble yourself and submit to who God is. Mm -hmm. And so we're, that's kind of like we talked about the other day. I don't remember when or where this was, but it was like that we're supposed to be witnesses. We're supposed to be like tell our, our testimony, our witness about who Jesus is. It's not always about convincing people, Bumley. And so it's like, what are we witnessing to? We're witnessing to the fact that God is glorious. God is worthy. God is valuable. God is weighty. He's the one who deserves recognition and praise and all of these things. Um, so, yeah, what do you guys think about this passage when it comes to um, the idea of doing everything to the glory of God. What does that mean for you? How does that actually play out in your life? Doing everything to the glory of God. I think what first comes to mind is like nothing is beneath God's care and attention. And like like the way that you do something matters to God, <laughs> whether people recognize it or not. So, <laughs> I, I mean... I think it, it just reminds me of the, the verse, like, work is unto the Lord, you know, yeah. like, where it's like, this is the work that you're doing or the things that you're attempting to do. There might be, like, a surface level of, like, I'm doing this for my job to earn money mm-hmm. or I'm doing this for my kids so that they're I'm helping them. But if you do it with God in the picture, mm-hmm. it changes it where he's the first audience, mm-hmm. you know, um, regardless of whether it's appreciated or noticed. Um, you're doing it, you know, for God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, going back to your using the word recognition, Jake, I, I think of that verse that way, of doing it all, well, like keeping God in mind mm-hmm. with all the things you're doing. Um, like in some ways doing it with your life oriented towards him or... Mm-hmm almost going up to the whole like practicing the presence of God like where as you like prayer without ceasing does not mean you're always praying about something specifically but like being more God aware in daily life and then that that being the motivation for why you're even doing the things you're doing or how you're doing the things that mm-hmm. you're doing yeah I like the word acknowledging God in everything we do um, and I think that it's kind of a fun idea to like kind of going back in that passage where it's like these things towards people being saved it's like we 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 recognize god's greatness and his his value because number one that's what's gonna that are if our actions if we acknowledge god in all of our actions acknowledge how valuable he is then our actions will be better number two if we acknowledge god in everything we do then people will see his value in some ways like there's over and over in the old testament god says for my name's sake Mm -hmm. I think people can take that and say, oh yeah, God does things for his name's sake. That's the end. But often it's for his name's sake so that people will know who he is. Um, that even goes back to the uh, the Egyptians when uh, that really weird story was around the golden calf story when um, God is like, Moses, I'm so sick of these people. I'm just going to start over with you. 
And then Moses says, well, what will the Egyptians think about you then? And God's like, you're right. Like, you know what? My name is worth it. And it's not like, I can't stand that the Egyptians would think poorly of me. It's like, no, no, no. I want the Egyptians to have relationship with me. So I want them to know about who I am Mm -hmm. and that I'm not going to bring people out and kill them in the desert. Um, yeah. So, okay. Last passage. This is second Corinthians four, 16 through 18. And this one is not using glory and talking about God at all. Um, it's talking about something else entirely, but, um, I think it kind of shows how the word glory can be used in different ways, or I guess kind of in a similar way, um, with different subjects. So it's therefore do not lose heart though. Outwardly we are wasting away. Yet inwardly, we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Now, in a very funny way, if we that could be taken very Gnostically. If you listen to our last... Uh, That's what I was thinking discussion. about. I, read it. I was like, this sounds like our last podcast. Yeah. But, um, but I really like this idea. It says, um, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that outweighs them all. And so what, what do you guys think? What, if you think about like an eternal glory, what does that actually mean for us? And how does that outweigh what we currently are going through? I mean, going back to everything we've talked about, like, I, I do think that God really has the long view when it comes to our formation as people and the process of discipleship. And there is an idea of the, the who, who you are is more important than what you do or the, like, that means the end. And just that the things we go through in life, if we let God work through those, have the power to shape us and make us more weighty mm-hmm. because we're becoming more like Christ mm-hmm. who is God, right? Mm-hmm. Like as we become more like Christ, I think we're becoming more weighty, mm-hmm. more valuable in some senses. Yeah. I think what came to mind for me is just the fact that outward appearances don't always reflect reality. Mm-hmm. Um, so in this case, it sounds like he's talking to persecuted people. So their outward experiences, they're being treated mm-hmm. like trash. They're being treated as worthless. Mm-hmm. Um, their lives can be poured out because of the whim of whoever doesn't like them and has power over them kind of thing. Um, so I think what he's contrasting is that's what it looks like from the outside right now. Like these tribulations are happening to you, these hard things you're maybe being impoverished because of economic persecution or um, physical persecution. You're being, literally, your body's being treated Mm -hmm. as if it's not worth (laughs) anything. Um, And then he says, in contrast to that, this is what's really happening is your your glory is growing. Like, your importance is, your value is increasing Mm -hmm. as you're faithful through these hard things that are happening. So I think, I think a lot of encouragement that we see in the scriptures for persecuted people is essentially saying, like, it looks like this, but this is the reality. Mm-hmm. Like, this is God's view. Um, and you're going to experience the goodness um, that you're, in a sense, earning <laughs> because you're enduring these sufferings and mm-hmm. God is on your side, even though it doesn't appear that he's mm-hmm. taking your side as you suffer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think the other thing that uh, could be going on here is like the idea of like currently things suck, but eternity when like the, the, the value of what you're going to get is so much greater that it makes all of this worth it. And like it, it this value is so big that like, you, you know, a new creation is so big and amazing that, all of this is like a blip on the screen kind of idea. Yeah. And that just brings up like the pearl of great price parable that Jesus told of like, this guy finds this really valuable pearl and he, he can afford it if he sells all his stuff and it's, it's totally worth totally it. Totally worth it. Cause it's worth mm-hmm. so much more than all his stuff if he can buy it. Mm-hmm. And then 
<laughs> he'll have something more valuable than what he sold to get it kind of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's very similar. It is similar. Yeah. So at the end of this, um, our original question was, um, did God create everything for his glory? Mm. And um, I think there's a couple things that kind of give us like a gauge on that question. And one of them is, if glory means weightiness and value, and God can't increase in value or weightiness, then like that can't be the end he's hoping for, right? It's not possible that for for him to want to be more glorious in some sense. Yeah, I will say like yeah. the, the only way that I could like try and make that phrase work mm-hmm. would be to say God does things so that more people know His name. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. And see how glorious He is. Yep. And appreciate His value. Yeah. And that's even part of the Lord's prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when you say hallowed be your name. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean like it, let your sanctified be your name. Yeah. So it's holiness versus gloriousness. Yeah. So they're a little bit different. But, yeah. yeah. You no, know, but actually and I think that's where, where where we end up or where I end up is that um you were just talking about how more you want he wants more people to know his name. And what is the end of that? It's that we see that God's intention is love and relationship. And what does love and relationship look like with God? it means you recognize who he is and how valuable he is. And then you have that relationship with him. That's like the, Luke is given the idea of um, the reason that parents have, hopefully the reason parents have children is as an outpouring of the love that they have for each other. In the same sense that the reason that God created is as an outpouring of the love that he had within the Trinity. Yeah. Um, Not that he needs the relationship with us, but that he enjoys that relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's like the whole, Eastern idea of perichoresis. It's like this mutual indwelling of the persons of the Trinity, the Father and Holy Spirit eternally in overflowing love for each other. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, if it's overflowing, if there's just so much goodness there, what does it result in? Like creation, the world, <laughs> and humans in his image. Um, so it's, yeah, there was nothing lacking in God. It's the exact opposite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For you personally, if we have, if you're, Thinking about God's glory, what is one way that that would change your life to acknowledge God's glory in your life in everything you do? I do think I can lose perspective very quickly and, like, narrow my focus to my immediate feelings about my immediate circumstances. I'm like, oh, poor me, I didn't get to do this thing I wanted to. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Where I just think that's a sign when, like, I'm able to get very down about really things that are not that important I do think that would probably change if I had God's goodness and Mm -hmm. glory in front of me more often Mm -hmm. yeah for me God's glory is something that I need to I want to say just meditate on more because I think too often I fall into and I know it's bad but I fall into like an automatic mode of like I'll do good things for God, and that's what he wants, because that's what I should do. <laughs> and he'll leave of, me alone. Oh, no, 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 leave me yeah. alone. But, like, and not necessarily to earn yeah. blessings, but, like, because I know what I should do, and this mm-hmm. is what I should do, you know, as opposed to, like, this is worth it. Like, mm-hmm. it's so worth it. And having that, like, God is so worth this yeah. is, like, a very, I don't know, it allows you to have joy in the midst of hard things or... Um, just an openness for God to lead you however he wants as opposed to being like, well, I'll I'll obey you within these parameters Mm -hmm. of my comfort zone. So I think if I were to really ingest the the value of God, um, I think I would probably have an easier time both just obeying and having a joyful heart while obeying. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me it's kind of like it It's often, I think it's something that a lot of people struggle with. It's like, where does the, where do we start mistaking the blessings for the blesser or the gift for the giver and kind of realizing how, how valuable God is won't diminish the value of the gifts, but will kind of help keep them in the proper perspective Mm -hmm. of like, you know, kind of like the idea is like, even if God didn't do any blessings, like that's still, God's still worth being in relationship with and worth following. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's good. 
Is it time for the get to know you question? Yeah, it's time for the get to know you question. So we were joking around before we started that like since we're talking about gloriousness and what that means, we should share about the most glorious you have ever been as a person, which means the heaviest you have ever lived. <laughs> okay, there we go. I'm just joking. No, that's not where we're going. Uh, the heaviest no, I've ever no, been no, no, was no, no, 155. No. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so based on the Exodus story, actually, and like God passing by Moses and revealing his glory to him, have you had like a special moment in your life where, at least in some measure or in some way, God did that for you, where you just like felt viscerally like his his presence, his weightiness? Or got a real sense of how great or good or huge he is. Do you have one that you'd like to share already? I just asked the question. Yeah, I think I think um, it was probably one of the times. I can think of a couple different ones, but probably the most um, standout one to me was when I was in Montana last year um, in May, and um, I was. Basically, I was like, I'm just going to like go drive and camp somewhere in the middle of nowhere, also known as the Terry Badlands, which is in eastern Montana. And I literally didn't not not only did I not see a person for four and a half days, but I did not see a footprint from a person for four and a half days. Um, like there was no like no even like idea that there was other people. Um, and when I, when I was there, there was a, there was a couple different moments, like one when I was like first there, cause like if you've ever been to a Badlands, it's like a bunch of flash floods around like a bunch of like really steep, like cones. Um, so when I first got there and I like looked out on it, I was like, wow. And then there was one point where I did this really stupid hike where I hiked like three and a half or four hours away from my camp. And I brought one water bottle and it was like 90 degrees and I was feeling really good the whole time, by which I mean no. Uh, but I got, like... So this, this place is, like, 45,000 acres of nothing. Except for these flash flood zone and spires. So I got to, like, this place where I was, like, so far away, I couldn't even see where I... The cliff that I had camped on. And I was there, and I was, like... I, like, looked in a circle, and I was, like... Besides, like, my own shoe prints, I couldn't see anything that wasn't me, like, was not just nature. Mm. It was, like, kind of, like, that, like, thinking about how beautiful and awesome that was of, like, thinking about how big God is and how in control he is and how, like, the creator of all of these things isn't, like, distracted or, uh, like, he's not, like, going to be beaten by anything that he created kind of idea. Mm. So it was like the immensity of creation, yeah. but then you're like, how much bigger and better? How much bigger does God have to be if like I could literally explore this place for the rest of my life and probably not see all of it? And it's like a tiny little place mm-hmm. in yeah. a state that no one goes to, in a town that no one goes to. Well, that's that's very similar to my story. Um, I don't think it. I don't think it was like indexed in my mind until now as like a story of God's glory mm-hmm. or weightiness, but it's. The one, I might have even told it on this podcast before, but where I was doing, like, a solo camping (laughs) retreat up in the mountains. And I was, like, a little bit... I just don't think my heart was in the right place in that it was very much, at the beginning of this retreat, I was just very much focused on what I wanted to do. Almost, like, treating this as, like, mountain me time. And what do I want to do with this Mm -hmm. me time I have in the mountains? And instead of like a like submissive like God, what do you want at this time? Mm-hmm. And then there was this huge thunderstorm like right in the mountains where I was, and I was not on a peak, so I was totally safe, and I knew that mentally. But the thunder was striking, or the lightning yeah, striking, the lightning strikes, the lightning strikes. <laughs> and the, but like I could feel like the thunder in my chest, in my body, like it was right there, mm-hmm. and it was so loud because it was echoing and hitting around. Um, it's like like you just feel like almost like a natural terror a little bit mm-hmm. and then there was just like this clear perspective moment of like lightning and thunder is nothing to God it's not even a snap <laughs> of his fingers it's like I've been treating you in a way I shouldn't God <laughs> like, yeah. like I am so small and you are so great mm-hmm. and like just yeah that sense of his power yeah, I mean, you guys gave, like, nature stories, so I'll give a nature story, too. You don't Stay have to give a nature theme. story. <laughs> <laughs> the I, application this week is to go out in nature yeah. and think yeah. about how weight Feel, heavy God is. Get caught up in a thunderstorm. <laughs> yeah. I remember, um, it was actually on our honeymoon, we were um, ocean kayaking, and it was 
it was in the Pacific Northwest, and there was a big splash behind us. And there was a shark refuge on this island. There's, like, great white sharks on the island that, like, around this island. And anyway, there were, like, seals, and there was a shark that had jumped up behind us and gotten a seal. And it was it was a distance behind us. It wasn't super close. It wasn't that far. It but was it wasn't that close. far. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you were like, oh, I'm having fun on the water. Isn't it pretty? Like, looking around on the surface of the water. And then all of a sudden, you're like, there are immense creatures underneath us, and we can't see them. And we couldn't survive, like, and there was a current. Anyway, we, like, turned around pretty quick, but then we were going up current to try to get back to the beach. And just, like, that feeling, though, of, like, I am a speck upon the surface of the world, you know, like the, Mm -hmm. and, like, a shark is a speck, Mm -hmm. you know, like, it's just, like, this, um, yeah, just visceral experience of being small and having, and I don't know that I necessarily, in the moment, I think I was more in survival mode. I wasn't necessarily, like, reflecting on the glory of the Lord. <laughs> um, but I do think, like, those experiences, you can easily... They were so impactful, like, with how you feel mm-hmm. that you can almost go there mentally. Like, I can just remember... I just remember looking, because in an ocean kayak, you're basically sitting beneath the water line, mm-hmm. and it's, like, right there. Like, there's not yeah. a big boat side. It's not... It's just you're, like, right on the water, and then feeling like how small. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that it's amazing that God made it all. You know? mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, does one of you guys want to pray for us to close? Sure, I'll pray. Heavenly Father, we um, do pray that we would um, come more and more every day to appreciate the weight of who you are and um, the goodness that you have, Lord. And um, I just pray that you would help us to integrate these kind of, I want to say, heady concepts of your glory, which is so hard to grasp in some ways, Um, but just integrate that with our reality, Lord, that we would appreciate who you are and the value that you have and that we would um, live into that truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.